My name is Charlene Gandhi, and I am the tech and data reporter over at Future of Good. And if you haven't come across us before, we are a digital publication covering the Canadian nonprofit, uh, philanthropic and social purpose sector. I've been in this role for about 15 months now, and I'd say one of the things that has come up really unexpectedly time and time again is this issue of cybersecurity in the nonprofit sector. We first reported on this back in March 2023 when the Canadian Centre for Nonprofit Digital Resilience convened a uh, working group to uncover some of the reasons that the sector seems to be particularly susceptible to uh, cybersecurity risks and breaches. Um, through that reporting, we actually heard a number of stories from charities um, all over Canada. Scouts Canada spoke to us about a data breach on its online registration form, and the uh, YWCA was subject to a ransomware attack. And even though they had backed up all of their data onto an external hard drive, the issue that they came up against was that they also found that their IT supplier wasn't a huge help at that point in time. More recently, we've seen a number of major organizations continue to be subject to cyber attacks. So in late 2022, SickKids was subject to a ransomware attack that halted all its internal systems. In October last year, the Toronto Public Library was subject to a cyber attack. And in the very, very early days of 2024, the Toronto Zoo has also been subject to a data breach. So in each case, we're really seeing that it's becoming more and more clear that nonprofit can't sit on their laurels when it comes to protecting their digital and their technical assets. So there are a number of different types of cybersecurity risks and attacks to keep an eye on. The most standard or well-known is the data breach in which sensitive or personal or financial information of donors, funders, or even community members is discovered by bad actors and used for personal gain. And as I've spoken about, there is also the ransomware attack, which is when data is essentially held hostage um, until an organization pays a monetary ransom to get it back. Now, in the case of this one, it's really important to remember that it's not the data itself that is valuable to the bad actors. It's that the data is important to you as an organization and that they can use that to their advantage to get a ransom out of you. In the sector, there are a number of reasons why nonprofits are more susceptible to these risks. Frontline staff might not see cybersecurity as everyone's responsibility. And with the rise of working from home and remote work patterns, staff might also be using devices that aren't equipped with the necessary security patches. On a similar note, some nonprofits and community organizations are using donated technology, which of course is given to them with the best intentions, but might not now be receiving the most up-to-date security patches. And finally, a lot of nonprofits are also reporting that they are struggling to find the funding for cybersecurity infrastructure, software, and training. And because it's unlikely to be related to a particular program cost, there are fewer pots of funding available for this kind of critical work. Of course, organizations everywhere are subject to cybersecurity breaches, but in the nonprofit sector, that, that lasting damage can be absolutely massive. You're talking about the personal or sensitive data of people who are already vulnerable, and if that gets into the hands of bad actors, they can also be subject to things like identity theft or financial fraud, which puts them in even more vulnerable situations. And of course, a data breach in the nonprofit sector can also result in a loss of trust and reputational damage, which, which can also have a knock-on impact on donations going forward. Through our reporting, we have come across three potential solutions to help nonprofits become more resilient to cybersecurity risks and attacks. The first is for nonprofits to run internal audits and create policies and really make cybersecurity every staff member's problem. That's because obviously many nonprofits and community organizations don't have the luxury of having a dedicated team to focus on IT and security. So everybody just needs to take the initiative to upskill, but also remain particularly vigilant to threats that come through, like phishing emails. The Islamic Family and Social Services Association is doing some absolutely fantastic work with their frontline staff, and this is where this image is from, to essentially create a cybersecurity policy that is entirely free of any technical jargon and so that everybody in an organization knows what their responsibility is. Just before the Christmas break, my colleague Gabe Oatley and I also looked into the rise of nonprofits being sold cybersecurity insurance as a separate policy to a general liability or business insurance policy that they would traditionally get. There were a number of perspectives shared in the piece from those who thought it was worth it to those who thought that the uh, investment didn't really make too much sense for them. But crucially, what we did find was that cybersecurity insurance providers are unlikely to offer coverage if the nonprofit hasn't already started to take some sort of preliminary steps to protect their data and their systems. To close, I will say that this is obviously a very overlooked and underfunded challenge in the sector. Treating it as a priority it basically only means that nonprofits are, are doing right by people who use their services and doing right by their donors. 
but it really also means that they're going to be able to better negotiate with technology providers and even cybersecurity software companies and draw more mutually beneficial deals as well. So thank you all. I'll stop there.